Hello future Stevie, this video is for you. That is, if someone can entice you out from under the bedclothes where you are now necessarily bemoaning your very existence just long enough to watch it. Come on, I promise I won't throw crockery at you. Again. You, my slightly aged but still stunningly fabulous self, are panicking. You've forgotten which internal organs it is that control the intake of oxygen. You're determinedly tramping a small trench in the floor. And you're attempting, among other things, to claw your own face off. As if, devoid of that somewhat socially demanded covering of the skull, you might be excused duties for a little while. You are, in short and somewhat less disturbing terms, panicking like an Olympic warrior before the 500 metre midterm. You are panicking as you have panicked before and as you shall probably, unfortunately and illogically, panic all your days. So really, I don't know exactly what you're doing right now, but I do know what you're not doing. You're not working. You can't work, you can't start, because that mountain is something entirely unscalable now. You should have started months ago, or at least weeks ago, or at least yesterday. Now? Now is far too late, you can't possibly do it now. You're gonna fail, you're gonna do badly, you're gonna waste opportunities. You're standing before a precipice, and you can't see past that point. Now, think. Honestly and logically, what is the worst that can happen? I could drop out. Oh yes, little known fact, I've done this before. This is actually University the Second. Dropping out, in fact, if I actually think about it, although it seemed the hardest thing at the time, although it seemed the end of the world for the little Hermione-ish girl who defined herself by test results and right answers, it didn't actually kill me. In fact, I got a job I loved, working as Supreme Wrangler amongst the literary forests. I found a course I adored studying that housed me amongst the most dreaming of spires, that found me some truly magical fellows. I started a YouTube channel where every time I upload a video, people from all around the world send me the most amazing of messages, encourage me to create even in difficult times, and, of course, recommend me fantastic reads and where to find them. It definitely wasn't the end of all happiness I had supposed and panicked it into being. And I doubt it would be again, if I needed to drop out once more. But really now, a desperate fleeing of the scene, murdered and by which I mean completely untouched exam papers fluttering at my heels, would actually be the product of panic, not inability. You can sit and write something, just as long as you don't get overwhelmed by the fear of that judgement that will be conferred upon it. So you can turn up, even if it is with but a single line scrawled across a hunk of torn paper. Having ascertained that you are in fact capable of material presence, what's the next worst step? You could fail or otherwise receive some measly, few-digited mark that denotes your merit as lacking. Lacking at least according to proctors and protocol. But happiness, life, time flowing, you might have noticed, isn't actually dependent on getting a mark higher than that great 4-0. You're lucky, future Stevie. You just need to remember it. And to do so, ask yourself why you're doing this degree. You're not actually looking for a job dependent on it, let alone a high mark in such. You're also not doing this to prove something to yourself, that you can jump through those specifically angled hoops by which innate cleverness is definitely measured. And don't conflate the goals of those around you with your own. Don't get caught in the current of a race you wish no part of. Or for a second, confuse what you want to do with impressing others. You are studying history and literature because you love history and literature. The mark you get at the end takes nothing away from the three years you got to spend in this beautiful place with these amazing people and these ridiculous customs. You have learnt things. Maybe you won't get a piece of paper proclaiming it to the world, but Maybe they don't measure in the ways that are actually useful to you. Still, you know you've learnt things. You've found those critics and theorists that have finally articulated exactly what it is you think and feel, who've offered you a model of the world you can handle. You've read a great many things and encountered a great many stories. I'd like to venture that that thing you have worked towards is your goal in life. That 
over time, you've become a better writer. Not to mention, of course, that it seems to be becoming practically law that to be a good writer you have to mess up your education. Don't fear the destination might not be exactly what you were looking for, because a certain shepherd once said, the journey is the worthier part, and you have had a brilliant journey. And that thing you just momentarily can't see past, it isn't actually an end at all. I know this video might not be as useful to you as it is to me. I am, as I said earlier, in the very lucky position of at least believing that I do not need or want a job that relies on this. Still, I hope this video is something slightly more than just a reminder to myself for when the rational part of my brain shuts down and is prepared to deny all but inevitable dismemberment. I hope there is something of this which helps those of you who, like me, end up in a flurry of panic over work. Like I said, I've been a dropout and a failure and believe myself in a better, happier situation now because of it. Even though this situation is nothing like that I imagined I wanted all those years ago. Tell me what you think. I'll as always be interested to hear and chat with you. Bye guys.